We're going to understand weather or synoptic charts, looking at the different symbols, including isobars that join points of equal air pressure. And we'll think about the differences between high pressure systems or anticyclones and low pressure systems or depressions, with warm fronts and cold fronts being associated with a passage of a depression as it passes west to east over the British Isles. I've used images from different weather charts on the 15th of May 2020. So we did a bit of work on air masses and you identified that a front is the boundary between two different air masses. It's important that you remember that this symbol with the red semicircles indicates a warm front and it indicates a warm air mass moving in. So, for example, a tropical maritime air mass moving in. The symbol with the blue triangles is a cold front and represents an a cold air mass moving in, for example, polar maritime. Now, the cold air is dense and can move very quickly, and the cold front can catch up with a warm front, as we see here. This is called a depression, and remember, we need to understand the passage of a depression. So as this whole system moves west to east over the British Isles, we need to understand the changes that we'll see in our weather. Now, I'm going to try and play this video. Not sure it's going to let me play that, but this video is from the Met Office and it explains how fronts form. Let's have a look. Hopefully it will work. Let's skip it on a little bit. You may have heard weather forecasters on television talking about a warm front or a cold front approaching, bringing with it a change in the weather. But what are they going on about? What is a weather front and how does it affect our weather? A weather front is the boundary between two bodies of air with different temperature and humidity. These differences depend on where the air has come from on the globe. For example, air sitting over tropical oceans becomes very hot and humid, while in contrast, air over the Arctic becomes very cold and dry. That's logical enough, but what happens somewhere like Britain, where our climate is neither tropically warm and humid, nor polar cold and dry? Over the Atlantic, these warm and cold air masses often meet. Just like oil and water, they don't mix easily and can become unstable as a result, giving us an active area of weather in which fronts form. When air masses first collide, it's impossible to know if we're looking at a warm or a cold front. It's only when one air mass dominates that we can distinguish between the two. If the warm air is stronger than the cold air, then this is called a warm front. You may have seen this on TV as a line with red semicircles along it. The semicircles point towards the cold air and the direction in which the front is moving. If the cold air has the upper hand, then it's a cold front, which is shown by a line with blue triangles along it. The blue triangles point towards the warm air and again in the direction of movement. But what is happening when two opposing air masses meet and what kind of weather does each front produce? On a fine day, if you see a layer of very high cloud beginning to spread across the sky, usually from the southwest in Britain, it may mean that a warm front is approaching. Warm air is less dense than cold air, so it tends to ride over the top of the cool air it's replacing. This creates a vertical slope to the frontal system, with the front first being seen high in the atmosphere, miles ahead of the front at ground level. As the warm moist air is forced to rise, it cools and water vapour condenses into water droplets or ice crystals. These form clouds that you see approaching, first as high cirrus clouds and then as thicker clouds. It's these interactions which form clouds. If you're measuring the air pressure as the front approaching, you'd see that it's falling. This is because the column of dense cold air above you is gradually being replaced with more and more warm and less dense air as the front moves closer. Layers of cloud also deepen and rain begins to fall. A warm front usually produces quite a long period of light and drizzly rain with a shorter spell of heavier rain at the beginning of the front. The rain or drizzle will eventually die out once the front has moved through but it will often stay pretty cloudy. You might think that a warm front would mean nice warm weather, but unfortunately that's not always the case. All that rain and loss of sunshine can mean that temperatures are actually lower than they were before the front arrived. So why is it called a warm front? Well, the cold dry air mass has been replaced by a warm humid air mass. It just doesn't feel much warmer. But what about cold fronts? 
Warm fronts are easy to spot because you see the leading edge of high cloud approaching on the horizon across clear skies. However, warm fronts leave clouds behind and the following cold front sneaks in under the cover of the clouds. This makes them hard to spot just using your eyes as it's difficult to see any changes that might be on the way. But remember that the pressure falls with a warm front because the air is less dense. Well, the opposite is true with a cold front. A cold front is a bit like a wedge. The air is colder and more dense than the warm air and it scoops it up causing the pressure to rise. And we can spot that using a barometer. So what kind of weather does a cold front bring? Deep cloud layers form as the warm moist air is forced to rise and cool. These cloud layers produce lots of rain, often in bands, and these bands tend to be quite narrow with heavy rain in them, sometimes with even hail and thunder. Once the front passes, there's often a dramatic clearance with blue skies, bright sunshine as the cold air descends as the front passes. Temperatures fall at first, but they may rise again when the sunshine appears. However, this sunny weather doesn't always last for very long because if the cold air is warmed, it will rise or convect as weathermen say, and produce showery rain clouds such as cumulus or cumulonimbus. As we've seen, weather fronts can be complicated things and bring with them some very varied weather, which is one of the reasons we have such an interesting time of it here in this country. We've looked at how warm and cold fronts are formed and what sort of weather they bring. But if you want to learn anything more about weather fronts or anything to do with weather and climate, visit the Met Office website. OK, so here's today's weather chart. Uh, this is from the BBC uh, weather website on the morning of the 15th of May 2020. And you can see um, that there's these white lines here called isobars, these join points of equal air pressure. Uh, we've got high pressure areas um, labelled and also low pressure areas labelled. Um, here's the British Isles here and Edinburgh in here. Um, so keep this one in mind because I'm going to show you a visualisation of the circulation of the winds uh, very shortly um, but you can see different fronts so the warm front here warm sector and cold front and you've just seen in that video what happens is this whole system moves across somewhere like the British Isles and um, bringing frontal rainfall all right hopefully that makes sense so this is the forecast for tomorrow the 16th of May there's a few of the features labeled you need to be able to identify these when you see different weather charts or synoptic charts all right have a look at this so this is a brilliant visualisation of the world's wind circulation. Uh, those of you who looked at differential heating uh, will know that we have um, more intense heating at the equator compared to the poles. And part of the wind's job is to redistribute that heat. So we don't have the, the tropics getting hotter and hotter and the poles getting colder and colder. Um, and at our latitude, um, we, we see um, lot, a lot of um, low pressure systems that uh, are working to redistribute that heat. Anyway, more on that later. For now, let's have a look at this map here. Hopefully you can see the white outline of the British Isles. Here's Scotland here and you can see Edinburgh pointed out with that green circle. We can see uh, the winds um, coming from the northwest across us um, but we get a sense of almost clockwise circulation around this area here. We're going to see that clockwise circulation of wind um, is associated with high pressure systems uh, whereas if we go up here we follow the coastline of Norway we see anti-clockwise circulation of winds here um, and much stronger winds shown by those darker colours and faster movement and um, this is a low pressure system which we'll see on the synoptic chart shortly. OK, so hopefully that's, this is starting to make sense. Uh, let's go to Carol Kirkwood from BBC Scotland Weather to explain how we decode or interpret a weather chart. So you can see this line of rain extending from Western Scotland through England and Wales all the way down into the Channel Islands. Ahead of it, it will be dry but muggy. Behind it, we're looking at more comfortable conditions. But of course, as always, you can find out more information on our website. Now, you may have seen a weather forecast like that at least once a day, but have you ever wondered, what's high pressure? What's a cold front? Well, if you have, it's your lucky day because we are going to deconstruct a weather forecast. 
So this is a typical pressure chart, also known as the synoptic chart. If we strip everything off it now and just focus on the low and high pressure, starting off with high pressure. Another high pressure area expected to form in the northwest. In the west here, we'll get this uh, ridge of high pressure coming across. A little ridge of high pressure, a good deal of dry, bright weather. A high pressure system in the summer is when the air is descending or falling towards the ground, generally bringing settled fair weather. The air under a high pressure dries, so there's less moisture, bringing dry and fine conditions. So if you're ever planning a picnic, high pressure are the words you want to hear. And the words you won't want to hear are got low pressure all the way, lots of isobars means it's going to be quite breezy. And the troughs of low pressure in the north are moving south as expected. The next area of low pressure spreads the weather fronts right up across the United Kingdom. A low pressure system means that the air is rising. As air rises, water vapour condenses into clouds, which may also bring rain, which of course is perfect if your garden is in need of watering. Something else you'll spot on this chart are the white lines. These are the isobars and they join places together of equal pressure. And you can see that the wind strength here, the isobars are quite well spaced, is going to be a lot less than it's going to be over here in the Atlantic, where the closer the isobars are together, the windier it's likely to be. Another really common weather term you'll hear me talk about are fronts. This frontal system will be pushing across and bringing with it cloud and outbreaks of rain. Good afternoon. Well, there is a, a fresher feel to the weather today, and that's mainly because we had a cold front going through last night, which brought a band of rain. We still have these fronts to contend with over the next 48 hours. What a front shows is a line between two different masses of air. A cold front, represented by blue triangles like this, introduces cooler, fresher conditions during the summer. And you've guessed it, a warm front represented by red semicircles like this shows that warmer air has been brought over the country. You can see where they've collided in the form of an occlusion and both bands will bring rain. And on a cold front, we may well have some heavy rain and some thunder and the rain crossing, in this case, from the west to the east. So if you are heading out, it may be wise to bring a brolly. So hopefully that's demystified the weather somewhat and the next time you hear the terminology that we use you will also understand it perhaps a bit better and be able to make up your own mind as to whether you should be bringing your wellies or your sun cream if you're heading out for the day. Okay, so hopefully that made a bit of sense and um, you're going to be working on that information a little bit later. Now, we're going to look at the passage of a depression, so putting those symbols together as we saw on the weather map and thinking about how weather conditions change as this whole system passes across the British Isles. You'll see, similar to what you saw in the video, the warm front here is less steep than the cold front here, and that makes a difference in terms of the height of clouds and the amount of rainfall that forms. So we've got a cool air ahead here, the warm sector in here, and then cold air as this cold air mass pushes in. On a weather chart looking like this, with those black lines being isobars that are joining points of equal air pressure. So as the warm front arrives, as you saw in the clip, we've got high level cirrus clouds and um, the warm air is rising, cooling and condensing to form clouds. It will start to get windier and we'll start to see uh, the cloud base come at getting lower and we'll get some showers. So you'll need your umbrella or a waterproof jacket. This little video shows a front approaching Edinburgh, so facing north, um, and we've got the front moving in from the west. So these clouds signalling that a change in the weather was coming. So you might have seen something similar in the past. At the warm front, we'll see stratus cloud, so a layered cloud. Um, it's called nimbostratus when it starts to rain. Um, so these kind of conditions are in the image here. And that's symbolised on a weather map with this symbol here. So the direction of movement um, shown there too. In the warm sector, it may stop raining and uh, the temperature may rise. We're in the, an area of possibly tropical maritime air mass, for example, and we're in this wedge here between the warm front and the cold front. As the cold front arrives, though, um, the clouds uh, building up into possibly cumulonimbus clouds, um, so this steep gradient here, um, warm air rising very rapidly and cooling and condensing to form clouds, and uh, we'll get a really heavy burst of rain. So you get um, you get a bit cold and you get a bit soggy. And after the cold front has passed, the air temperature will be cooler. You're now in a cooler air mass, for example, um, polar maritime. 
and that's summarised in this visual here. Feel free to pause that, this video and uh, read through um, the summary of the passage of a depression. So hopefully now um, we start to make the connection between what we see in the sky, the clouds, um, and how that links to the theory of a passage of a depression. Um, I wonder if you can state whereabouts in the depression you would see these clouds. If you want to pause the video, please do so. And here are our answers. So we would see D first, the warm front approaches, we'll see high level cirrus clouds. Then we'll see C at the warm front, the nimbostratus clouds. Then we'll see A at the cold front, the cumulonimbus clouds. And then some cumulus following, possibly we'll see B, uh, but B is certainly away from any fronts um, because we see cumulus clouds on, on fine days as well as, um, as, well as anything else. Okay, here is a little bit more complex version from the Met Office. Um, for those of you who are interested, these straight lines are lines of longitude. Um, north isn't right at the top of the map here. Uh, we follow the lines of longitude to the north. And we've got the outline of the British Isles here and you can see various fronts. So this is from today um, and it explains why um, we've got we've had um, some clear skies, but we've also had a bit of cloud passing over um, but generally high pressure there. So to summarise, um, here is your list of features to look for in low pressure systems on the left hand side and on the right hand side, the features to look for in high pressure systems. Please pause the video if you would like to read through these in detail. It's important that you understand this summary. Let's test your understanding. So this is a synoptic chart for the 14th of November 2010. Um, and you can pause the video while you study this. You're looking for Glasgow, so Glasgow here in Scotland, um, and thinking about what the weather is like in Glasgow. Um, this is winter, remember, so this is um, November, so the temperatures will be cold, um, but think about what you now know about synoptic charts and what the weather conditions will be like. Think about different weather elements. And question two, do the same for Lyon. What is the weather like in Lyon? And try to give reasons for your answers. So pause the video, please, and uh, note down what you think. And here are the answers. How many did you get right? Uh, so Glasgow experiencing a depression, very unsettled conditions um, with thick clouds and heavy rain showers at the cold front, uh, strong winds because the isobars are close together. And the wind direction will be southwesterly because the winds blow anti-clockwise in a depression following the isobars. In Lyon, the opposite, settled conditions um, caused by an anticyclone or high air pressure, um, dry weather because there's no fronts, and the isobars widely spaced showing calm or gentle conditions. Wind directions easterly because the winds blow clockwise in an anticyclone, and there will be low temperatures, maybe frost because it's an anticyclone in winter. So hopefully you're happy with what we've covered here today and do make use of the BBC Weather website and the Met Office surface pressure charts if you'd like to explore this further.